Hey everyone, Dave here again. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick video here of my second David Bradley chainsaw, uh, the Model 360. I have one other one like this that I, I made a video of a while ago. Got that up and running. Uh, this saw is in much worse shape, um, missing missing a couple of things, but uh, I wanted to show this bar. It's a David Bradley bar, and uh, the interesting thing that I've found about these saws is this bar can either be in here where this one's mounted or it can mount out here on the outside and if you take this I got this loose but if you take this cap off there's your sprocket for running you can actually run two bars and two chains which would let you cut chunks for the old small chunk stoves and uh, that was my main reason for purchasing this saw and uh, because my other one runs well I've seen a video of a guy that has two bars on his saw and and I've never even seen such a thing my theory at first was you move the bar from here over to here then you could lay the saw down and cut, say, a stump down closer to the ground where you wouldn't be able to get down as close with your bar mounted like that. But I think a lot of it like that where it is now is for the balance because it, it, it's a heavy saw, but it's pretty well balanced. Um, this had no, no spark. Um, I got in and took the flywheel off. That was kind of kind of different in itself. Um, it uh, doesn't have the cooling fins mounted on the flywheel. It's actually a, a metal plate that sits over the flywheel, and that's what your cooling fins are. Uh, so uh, you don't have much of a chance to, to break off any of the cooling fins while you're trying to get the flywheel off. So it, it could actually be a good design, but it was definitely different. But I do have spark now, and it will pop on starting fluid. But what it was happening is it, it would not turn the chain. Uh, everything seemed like it, it ran up to enough RPMs that the chain should have started turning, but it didn't. And uh, I had to get into there and lube some stuff up. But I've already cleaned this saw up a lot, and uh, it's still kind of funky looking. But this one cover right here and with this tag is so much nicer than my other one you can't read it at all and uh, but next place I'm going is here to the carburetor this side is a little cleaner uh, I cleaned the outside of it but it needs some attention inside and it's missing the linkage that goes from here down to the throttle which that I think I can make without a problem but uh, I was hoping it would have a, a rewind because I know they came with them. The holes are there for it, but this is just like my other one. It doesn't have the rewind. But um, first I thought I was more or less getting it for parts and being able to set a double bar set up on the other saw. But I'm getting closer. I think this one's going to be a runner. Um, this bar... It was really rusty. I'll swing over here and show you another saw, how rusty that bar is. There's no chain. This is an old home light. And uh, the story behind getting that 
David Bradley saws, I ended up buying six chainsaws basically to get the one. And but at approximately the five bucks a piece, I figured uh, the one of them was worth it. And I looking over the other saws, I think I'm gonna get some of those possibly going. But but this is a 1957 model. I know when I put my first video on uh, I didn't even know what year it is, but I did some research, and they're both 1957s, so if I can get them up and running again, and uh, especially if I can get this bar over onto my other one and, and uh, make another video, I think that'll be well worth it, but if nothing else, there's a lot of good parts here for my other saw. But uh, that's where things stand with this at this point, and uh, I'm sure I'll have another video coming along if uh, I get somewhere with it or even if I don't. All right, thanks for watching. See you later.